if you are going abroad and you are becoming an expat or immigrant that we're not replicating the systems we're trying to escape from in our new home. Hello and welcome back to yet another episode of Let's Unpack That. Now you know we gotta unpack that, right? My name is Sojourner and I am the social worker and travel educator behind Sojourneys and the host of this travel education series. And today we are doing a requested topic by you, which is what is the difference between an expat and an immigrant? So I'm not gonna lie, I have my laptop, I have my notes because this one took some research. <laughs> So if you were to look up the definition of expat or its original word expatriate, you will come up with maybe two or three definitions. First definition is one that we don't really use as much to think about an expat, but it used to mean banish or to exile or to withdraw oneself from residence in or allegiance to one's native country. You'll also see expatriate be defined as someone just living in a foreign land or foreign country or you'll see it defined as to leave one's native country to live elsewhere. So while we don't use it for the exile connotation it used to have, at the root of it, an expat is just someone who lives in a different country. Also, expat was originally meant to be for people who are temporarily in a country, not living in a country for years and years and years and being long-term. Cause you'll hear the term long-term expat, which again can be another word for immigrants. So let's look at what it means to be an immigrant according to the dictionary. An immigrant is a person who comes to a country to take up permanent residence. Or you'll see it defined as an international movement of people to a destination country of which they are not natives or where they do not possess citizenship in order to settle as permanent residents or naturalized citizens. They sound kind of similar to me. So what are the differences? I think we need a visual to help us out with this one. One second. To outline the similarities and differences between expat and immigrant, we're going to use a Venn diagram with their common denominator being that they both live outside their home country. But when you talk about race, normally an expat is a term only reserved for a white person or initially was reserved for a white person, while immigrant is normally reserved for a black and brown person, though this does vary based on your citizenship and nationality, which leads us to where you're born. So if you look at expat, normally that's a person from the global north, so who benefits from Western privilege and given those advantages, while an immigrant is from the global south. For a length of time, it's normally the assumption that an expat is going to have the means and opportunity to go back home, while an immigrant is normally assumed to be staying somewhere permanently. Then when you look at class, which all of these privileges are linked, you will see that a lot of expats, especially now, like quit their corporate or tech jobs to travel the world, or they come from middle upper class backgrounds, depending on the person. And all of this is again linked to your higher education or professional background in which an expat is able to use their higher education like degree master's bachelor's degree and use it everywhere in order to get into countries while people who are classified as immigrants especially if they're black or brown from the global south their degrees are not seen as worthy compared to expats because they weren't from schools in the global north However, there are a lot of exceptions to these rules when you talk about third culture kids or other people who go abroad that don't fit nicely into these categories. And so we're gonna unpack one of many examples. However, it is never that easy when we talk about these systems, okay? Because there is a scenario that affects people who look like me and have similar identities to me. For example, as a black American, when I went to teach English abroad, I was considered an expat. And this goes against the history of who was considered an expat because I'm not white. However, due to my Western privilege, or you also hear it called first world privilege, I am considered an expat. And I only went to that place temporarily. Now that we know all this information about the history of who's an expat, who's an immigrant, and the power and privilege that goes in those identifiers, what are we supposed to do? I have a few recommendations. The first one would be to totally retire the word expat. It seems like that is the word that everyone wants to use and that people are really, really attached to. But if it does have this history of power, why should we still use it? 
Which brings me to the second thing we could do. Reclaim the word expat. A lot of people who never thought they could be or were expats are now using that as a term of endearment, something they are proud of because their people, especially if they're black or brown, were never thought to be the ones who could be expats in the first place. Three, do not believe in the hierarchy that goes into the language. You know, language changes all the time as we saw that expat used to mean exile know that this baggage of expat and immigrant exists but we can consciously choose not to ascribe to them we shouldn't attribute these labels to our self-worth as travelers no matter if we are considered an expat or an immigrant at the end of the day they were constructed to make us feel inferior or feel superior instead of believing it even though we know on our passport or on our visa we'll see this language not internalizing it but above all remember why you migrated at the first place that is the root of all of this at the end of the day we all want to thrive and flourish in whatever place we call home so remember the reasons why and make sure that if you are going abroad and you are becoming an expat or immigrant that we're not replicating the systems we're trying to escape from in our new home if you are looking for more resources on how to understand expat and immigrant or to get other perspectives aside from what I showed in this video, I have some resources for you. The first one is the podcast by the Black Expat called The Global Chatter Podcast. It is an ongoing conversation that focuses on international mobility, identity, race, career, and more, especially as it relates to black and brown people. Another resource is a BBC article that gets more into the semantics behind the difference between expat and immigrant. And then you have the Atlantic that goes more the historical linguistic route and unpacking the history of when it was not so cool to be an expat to kind of where it is now and what we would need to do in the future to make sure that these hierarchical status symbols or status language is not so embedded into our culture. And that article is called Expat and the Fraught Language of Migration. But now tell me what you think. I know this is a hot topic amongst travelers, so leave any comments, reflections, or opinions below. And I look forward to reading them and seeing you all in my next video next Tuesday. Bye, stay curious.